Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 31st, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The DA has been talking about a malware that's really just created by compiling Python code using Py2exe. Now, a while ago, he published a Yara rule for this and showed how to decompile Python 2 using unpy2exe. But uh, so far, there wasn't really a good tool for Python 3. Well, uh, there is now a decompile Py2exe is the name of the tool. It does deal with uh, Python 3. So if you're running into this, uh, take a look at the DA's diary for the links. And a Florida marketing firm, uh, VC Marketing, with a somewhat spotted history, did leak call recordings on the internet, and these recordings did include credit card numbers. Now, aside of this happening to this particular company, it's actually somewhat a common problem that companies deal with how to remove credit card information from recorded calls. Most customer support calls are recorded, and of course, customers often do give their credit card number over the phone, not realizing that, uh, first of all, the credit card number is probably going to be entered into a website by the customer support representative. And uh, secondly, that this credit card number may now end up on a call recording, which of course is also kept in digital form. Now, there are a number of ways to avoid that, where you, for example, give customer support representatives a button they can press whenever they would like to black out a part of the recording. But then again, there's no guarantee that they will press that button. And of course, for the customer, it's a lot easier to provide that credit card number over the phone while they're talking to customer support than having to go back to some kind of website and enter the number there. So if you do record calls from customer service, make sure that you take care of any personal identifying information, not just credit card numbers that may be recorded as part of the call recordings that you're doing for customer support. And of course, if you can't remove the data, then you have to safeguard that data just like you would any other database or such that keeps equivalent data. Now, one of the real difficult things to implement in web applications is password recovery. Now, we all know that things like password reset questions and such don't work. Uh, SMS messages are not supposed to be as secure as we have often assumed. So uh, really hard to make this happen in a reasonably frictionless and cheap manner. Well, uh, Facebook now introduced uh, their idea to password recovery. They call it the delegated recovery protocol. Essentially, what this means is that when you set up a new account with a website, you can delegate certain other web services and of course, Facebook assumes that Facebook is one of the services that you will use for that to be used to recover your password. Now, what happens next is that if you forget your password for this service you just signed up for, then essentially you can use your Facebook account to verify your identity. Sounds kind of interesting for a lot of consumer applications and like, and of course, it's not limited to Facebook. Anybody could be a site that people rely on to reset their password. It's really up to the person which sites they trust and which sites they don't. This protocol also has been submitted to the IETF for becoming a possible internet standard. And Cisco published uh, what they're calling the final advisory for their WebEx plugin. It turns out version 107 is the one that fixes all the bugs that Tavis Ormandy at Google discovered. He agrees and uh, verified the fix. There's also now a version 108 out. Uh, not sure what the difference is here. Probably just sort of a cleanup uh, feature fix, not necessarily a security fix. So if you're running version 107, you should be good now. Well, if you're using the utility CryptKeeper on Ubuntu to encrypt folders, uh, you may want to look for a different tool. Apparently, no matter what password you enter, it only uses the letter P to encrypt your files. 
The problem arises from a change that was made to the encrypted file system EncFS and CryptKeeper is no longer maintained so nobody was there to actually make the corresponding change to CryptKeeper which then apparently resulted in this bug. I'll add a link uh, to the bug report in the show notes so you can check if there are any updates after I made this recording. And talking about updates, yesterday I talked about the hotel in Austria that had issues with its locks and registration systems after it got infected with ransomware. Well, it turns out the locks themselves were actually fine. They were not hit by this particular exploit. It was also possible for people to leave the rooms. I was somewhat skeptical as I noted yesterday about that assertion. Now, what really happened was that the registration system was hit. So the PC that being used for registering guests and also this PC has to be used to make keys of course for new guests arriving and that's sort of how people didn't get into their rooms because they couldn't create any new keys. So it wasn't quite as bad as originally reported but uh, still a pretty big business impact for this hotel. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And don't forget, there's also still the poll going on for the Security Blockers Award. So uh, please vote for this podcast and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.